Hello everyone, my name is Gufran Salih and I am really excited to be talking to you at GrimCon about my topic, which is when opposites attract, making privacy trend on TikTok. Before we begin, I just want to set the expectations right off the bat. What this presentation is, is a demonstration of how TikTok can be used to meet young people where they are and spread privacy literacy, making sure that they're staying safe and secure online, regardless of the apps that they're using and how to be smarter about their choices. What this presentation isn't, is a commentary on TikTok's privacy and security concerns. I, as a privacy professional, am well aware of those concerns. I understand that there is a lot and it's very complex and there is a lot of issues that even I myself don't understand, but I wanna focus this presentation heavily on how I've been able to utilize this platform to be able to teach people a little bit more about how to keep themselves safe online. The, you know, you know, I can make a whole separate presentation about the privacy concerns of, of TikTok. Um, but a little bit about me, um, your presenter, just so you know me before I start, you know, babbling. I am a self-proclaimed privacy enthusiast. I graduated last year from Syracuse University with a degree in information management and technology. I am an avid listener to Pitbull songs. I'm actually a huge Pitbull fan. Um, so that's why he is on here. It, he's actually a big part of my personality. And I just want all of you to know that. And I am also just a regular TikTok user. And I I try not to use the word influencer. It's not my favorite word. I'm a creator and a very diligent user of the app. I have been able to pick up on trends and dances and you know, you know, what's what's the sound that everyone is using or or what's the 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 you know dance that everyone is doing. And that's how you know you're a TikTok user is that you're able to keep up with those trends, even though the app is so huge and there's so many different sides to it. Like I think at one point I was on Lumberjack TikTok. And now I think I'm on like, I think I'm on prison TikTok, actually. I don't know. I just, I, it, it changes over time. And I think it also um, changes with my mood. But um, before I, you know, had started my current job, I was actually uh, interning at a financial institution doing IT for them. So I didn't really know anything about privacy. This is all kind of stuff that I learned throughout the pandemic in my first job. And that actually is kind of rolls great into you know, my, my next segment of this talk, which is how I got started. So I was feeling extremely overwhelmed. I was learning so much. I was reading so much about data privacy. I was reading like literal laws and policies and regulations and trying to understand what exactly we were looking for in data privacy. And one of my escapes from that, because I got overwhelmed so quickly was TikTok. Here's a little screen grab of my For You page. You can see I'm just scrolling through and liking videos. Uh, I get the rogue video here and there, so don't mind me if I skip any videos, but I needed a space to be able to creatively kind of push out everything, all the knowledge that was in my mind because it was building up to a point where I was like, this is, I can't handle this anymore. So one fateful Sunday in August, I, I posted my first TikTok and it happened to be about data privacy and it happened to blow up. And I used a popular sound. I, you know, talked a little bit about how to keep yourself a little bit safer in your home and when you're using your computer. And that TikTok blew up. I remember when TikTok was musically and it was just filled with floppy haired boys who were lip syncing. And I was blissfully unaware of any sort of privacy concerns or, or security concerns that TikTok had, or even like of what CCPA, CDPA, GDPR are. I had no idea. And now I was spreading my knowledge on this app that I loved so much. But that's the thing is that I, because I was a user, I was able to be successful in the app. So let me tell you a little bit about my recipe for a viral TikTok. And you really only need three things. Disclaimer, this won't work every time. The TikTok algorithm is a very fickle thing. Sometimes, you know, your most well thought out, most, uh, you know, well researched videos don't do as well as you want them to, but that's okay. Here are three things that you can do to kind of boost your TikToks if you do so choose to create them. I'm not saying you should, um, so that you can reach more people. So the first thing I always use is a trending sound, or if I can use it, if it fits with the, the subject matter. I have to condense all of you know my knowledge of data privacy into a 15 second to one minute video. And what helps, what helps the algorithm pick it up is a sound that's already been used by a lot of users. It's just more likely to be shown on more for you pages. Trending sounds could range from, you know, an audio that from from an audio snippet from a song to an audio snippet from a TikTok that someone thought was really funny to anything. It could really be anything. I think a car horn at some point was a trending sound. Pick a trending sound, make sure it lines up with what you want to convey and use it. The next thing is concise 
fun facts. You never want to get too technical. You never want to use lar like large words or, or jargon that someone might not understand. I am, my target audience is 13 to 24 year olds. I don't think they're going to know every single term that I use as a privacy professional. So keep it high level and encourage conversation in the comments. I think that that was my biggest thing is that I would talk about something at a very high level, very rudimentary so that everyone was able to get it. And then I would get questions in the comments and I'd be able to engage. The last thing, a sense of humor. <laughs> I think I have a great sense of humor. Not everyone thinks that, but I think I do. But TikTok is all about having fun and sharing laughs. Um, and you just need to let go of any sort of seriousness so that people can see that, you know, yes, you're a privacy professional or a security professional, but you can have fun. You can talk about this subject in a way that's fun and, and engaging and you're really able to understand it. Um, so if you bring humor into it, you're golden. I'm pretty sure, you know, they'll respond well to it. I, I, I think they have for me. I, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Who, who knows, really? So I actually want to go into an analysis of a couple of my most favorite TikToks. So this was the first TikTok that, it's not the first TikTok that I've ever posted, but it was the first TikTok that went viral. It has 700, at this point, it has 798,600 views, 248,800 likes, and 763 comments. So I will go ahead and play it. So let me let me explain. Um, so the audio, while inappropriate, um, was actually trending that day. I think I saw four or five back-to-back -back videos that used this audio. And the whole premise of the trend was to introduce yourself to your friend or your significant other's parent and talk about what you can bring to the table. And obviously, I had to talk about my mad privacy skills or my mad security skills. These are so basic. I'm sure that for all of you who are seasoned professionals, this is all kitty play. But I was trying to talk to young people who might not know what a password manager is, who might not know that they should be muting or turning off their Alexa. These are all things that, you know, we don't really think about, at least as teenagers, I never really thought about it, but I wanted to bring it into this. So I had a trending sound. And in the comments, I started to get so many questions, so many like, just questions about, you know, how, how, what password manager should I use? What else could I be doing? Should I cover my webcam? The, I started a conversation with this one video where I used a trending sound and I was smiling and I used very short actions that people could do on a daily basis. And so I think that that's why this video got picked up. Could be for another reason that I might not know of. Some people might like that scarf. I'm wearing it right now. I quite like it. So it could be the scarf, but pretty sure it had something to do with just keeping it simple, keeping it fun, and teaching people something. And that's what these videos are about. Oh, it's playing it again. Let me go ahead and skip it. So my next video, this one was a little bit more well-researched, well thought out, uh, and it had 69,200 views, 18,100 likes, and 163 comments. This one, the premise of this one was just talking about the different data privacy regulations that exist worldwide. And I, you will see that I brought a lot of humor into this one. <laughs> So let's talk about this video. I actually did a lot of research on this one because I was already reading data privacy regulations for my job. So I kind of had it fresh in my mind of what the privacy policies were and what I thought of them. Um, 
granted, this was a long, this was a while ago. I think this was back in October. So I have grown since then a little bit. I would change my ratings just a little bit. But as you can see, I used a, a really fun song, Funky Town. It wasn't quite trending, but a lot of people did use it as background music. I was, I thought I was funny, maybe. I don't know. I, I referred to the US as girly pop, which I don't think I will ever do again. However, a lot of people did respond well to it. Um, I kind of incorporated that humor of like, what, what are you doing? Or like amazing, show stopping, incredible. Like these are all like memes and trends and 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 vernacular that is used by young people. And I incorporated that because it's actually stuff that I use on a daily basis. Um and I, you know, it was it was well researched, well thought out. It didn't do as well as the other video, just because I think that this one was a little bit more long form. This one was a minute long, and longer videos tend not to do as well on TikTok, just because you know it's you, know, you want to just you know see a video, like it, be done with it. See a video, like it, be done with it. Um, so I really enjoyed this video. I think that making it was great because I got to learn something, but also started a conversation. I had people in the comments asking about their own countries, asking why I gave readings. You know, they wanted to know where they could read up on it a little bit more, what their individual rights were. So it got people thinking like it's the, the whole purpose of this video was to get people talking about their data privacy laws in their countries. It's not about what I thought, even though I thought what I thought is great, even though it's just my, it's, it's my opinion. I'm a little biased, but you know, it's, I wanted to have people start questioning their own countries and their own states and their own cities and be like, well, what, what's, what's here and what can I know about it and what can I do? And so that was something really cool that I was able to do. And then my last video that I'm going to talk about is a, actually, um, it's about password managers. So this one was a little bit more fun to film. I was just dancing. There's not really a lot of talking. It's mostly just like title text. So let's take a look. This one had 22,900 views, uh, 3,651 likes and 102 comments. This was one of my favorites to film and actually one of my favorites to edit. I saw that a lot of people were using Shake It by Metro Station, which is the song that was just played to dance. They just were dancing to it, just having fun, letting loose. So that's what I did. I mean, I jumped on the bed at some point, which I probably shouldn't have done, um, but it was it was a fun time for me. Um, a lot of people were using the sound to dance, so it was trending a lot. Of, you know, the algorithm was picking it up and showing it to more people because the more you like sounds, the videos with that sound, the more it pops up on your For You page. I know that from personal experience. And I thought it was a really cool way to show off the importance of a password manager while also showing off my sick dance moves you know i i was concise i didn't you know they were not very long like three lines per caption and move on you want to keep it short you want to keep it sweet and then there was a call to action at the end where here are some of my favorites that you can look into and here are their prices these are free these are paid and that is how you know, in the comments, the majority of the comments, they were just asking me what I thought, which ones that I use, which ones I recommend, um, and why I recommended them. And it was another way to start a conversation. And that's what these TikToks are for, is to, for, at least for my brand, for my purposes, is to start a conversation and to get people to want to learn more. And I think that, you know, through these three videos and also the rest of the videos on my page, I was able to do that. And it was so much fun. So cool. I got to learn a new skill, like how to effectively communicate my facts, my very technical or very legal filled facts to young people, to people who might not understand these facts um, and be able to start a conversation. You know, uh, so to end it, <laughs> what started as a way to show my friends what I was learning at my job in a fun and creative way. It turned into creating content that was accessible, informative, and started a conversation. I'm honored to be able to use this app and to teach people to be more diligent about what they share online. Privacy is and will always be one of the most important things to us as people, as citizens. Um, we are granted our rights through our privacy regulations, and as someone who has been the victim of you know sharing too much online and seeing the consequences of that whether that be through falling for scams or or just general kid mean stuff um, I had to learn and I want to be able to use this platform to let people learn 
this isn't perfect by a long shot. What I do is different and I still am learning and growing as you can see from one of the comments from B more slight correction, very slight, but it was a good correction. It was something that I needed to know so that I can continue to make these TikToks and make them better. I enjoy this and I think that it is something that should be used more by privacy and security professionals. It doesn't have to be on TikTok. You don't have to use the platform if you don't believe in it. But I think that if you are passionate about teaching people about how to protect themselves, or if you're passionate about cybersecurity, there is a way to communicate that to get people to be more excited about it. I have had so much fun and I'm so glad that people want to stay on cybersecurity TikTok or want to stay on data privacy TikTok. It has made my life filled with color because, you know, again, this field is very, it's a lot, it's draining at times and it can make you feel like, oh, there's dead end to this. I don't know what I'm going to do, but moments like these comments like these make it worth it. So I hope that you've learned something from this, this presentation. And I hope that you know that this process, this, you know, making these TikToks, it's never easy. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of mental space. I myself am currently taking a break from making TikToks because my work is a lot and because it took a lot on my mental health, on my mental health, but I'm having a good time and I'm so honored to be able to do this every single day. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you're able to take something out of this.